Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the webinar. So we're joined here today by three separate founders and, and CEOs who took part on, uh, on the Hatch and BIM Innovation Studios over the last three years. So each founder here is a, has a very different journey and they're at a different stage. So, we'll go, so it'd be very interesting to hear where they are at the moment, some of their challenges and what the future looks like for these people. So I want, and, and I want to hear what each one took away. So today we have Kate Beckers, founder and CEO of Micro Harvest. We have Jennifer O'Brien, founder and CEO of See and Believe, and Lee Hunter, founder and CEO of Oyster Pitch. So we might just start. So I'll go around the table. I let each part, each, each founder introduce themselves and maybe just give a brief explanation about their company and then we'll get into the questions. So Kate, can we start with you? Sure, sure, my pleasure. It's a, it's great to be back with the Hedge team, I have to say. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm Kate. Um, I uh, am uh, the co-founder and CEO of Micro Harvest. Um, so this is a company that focuses on the production of alternative proteins. Um, so we do this with biotechnology. So we grow microbes, bacteria, and they are the source themselves of, uh, as, of protein. So single cell protein is also called. Um, and these can be used as ingredients in food and pet food and definitely also in aqua feed. So they have the potential to replace fish meal. So really bringing in sustainability there. Um, yeah, so I kicked the company off a little bit more than two years ago. Um, and then uh, shortly after that, uh, I met up with, uh, with Hedge. So uh, they were really a part of the start of my journey. Brilliant. Thanks, Kate. And over to you, Jen. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jennifer O'Brien, and I'm the founder of See and Believe. And See and Believe is we're scaling up some Irish native seaweeds, starting with Palmaria palmata, and we're using that uh, seaweed to develop a range of alternative protein products for the consumer market, for the food market, starting with the plant-based seafood products. So we're, while we did a soft launch of some products into one of Ireland's largest supermarkets, we're now going to market uh, internationally all over the world with four, four different products, while also scaling up uh, seaweed as well. So really nice to, to meet all of you today and, and happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Brilliant, Jen, and congratulations. And um, Lee, you, you're at an earlier stage, but it's a great story. Um, do you maybe want to give a quick introduction and around your project and where you are at the moment? Yeah, 100%. Uh, so hi guys, my name is uh, Lee Hunter and I, uh, as Niall said, very early stage, but um, I came to Hatch with the, the earliest of stages and it was just an idea. And uh, because of Hatch now, it's it's just, just nearly a year that I have my team working on the um, on the oyster pitch and uh, hopefully we're going to be building a machine that um, picks out the living and the dead uh, oysters to help automate uh, that process because it's all done by hand uh, still within the industry and uh, yeah so just because of because of hatch things things are now moving um, and things are a little bit more than an idea which uh, which is a big help because I'm sure everyone here uh, always all, all, all started with just an idea definitely and look lee i think it's brilliant and you're going to save your own back and many other oyster farmers backs in the future hopefully um, <laughs> just um just on that so lee you're at a very early stage so you're you're very much in the idea concept stage what was the main challenge for you getting it from an idea in your head to actually making things happen? And can you maybe explain a little bit more about how, how you got the ball rolling here? Um, well, basically Hatch was, uh, I, I had all the ideas and it was all being built together and it was all just tender and there was no, there was no spark. And Hatch really, really was the spark that got the whole fire going. And as I say that, um, you know, I was the on last year's cohort and it was a month long process. And within two weeks of finishing the, uh, the Hatch course, I had two engineers uh, from Letterkenny Lab, the Wiser Lab. And uh, now, just as of last month, I've got um, a, an, a, an AI engineer 
don't know if they have an official title yet because it's quite new but uh that's that's all came from just doing the hatch course and you know getting the ball rolling they were really helpful with you know getting to know uh where to go who to talk to that was my biggest problem because i was just an oyster farmer trying to make the industry easier and who do i talk to but well, more oyster farmers who also try and make the ind industry easier so we didn't know who to go to so that's that was basically hatch's biggest influence on me anyway is really getting the ball rolling and and who to talk to and where to go brilliant thanks lee and i think i'm going to steal that uh, mm -hmm. hatch is the tinder for for agriculture <laughs> entrepreneurs um yeah. case do you so uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the challenges you've maybe faced maybe when you started off or maybe the challenges as because as you were scaling yeah no sure um i think the main challenges for me was really trying to understand the market because i have a quite a big network in biotechnology and i knew how to scale the process how to make the product but in the end you know you can make a brilliant product but if it's not what the customer is looking for it's of no use so and especially we are playing in the b2b ingredients industry so you really need to work together with, with customers and finding out what's what's the real problem um, so I had a big network in biotech, but not in aquaculture. So uh, I participated in the Women in Aquaculture uh, program, uh, um, which was a lot of fun because you also meet other um, uh, founders that are uh, doing all kinds of things within aquaculture. So that's one way to learn about what's going on in the space. Um, but also on top of all the... Um, you know, the workshops and the network there are just explaining, okay, how, how big is the agriculture market? What are the sub-segments? Things like that, which is really important for us. Um, but also really bringing us into context uh, with people that are relevant in the space. Um, and I think this is, I was really, really surprised like with Hedge because it's like I was very much outside of the whole network and was like Hedge took me and dropped me right in the middle uh, to all the people. And also because it's like in big companies like a Cargill, you know, it's so big before you find out who to talk to, you are two years further and you're just brought connected right with the right people uh, that you need to be with. So that was uh, that was very, very useful for me. And um, even later, I also joined uh, a trip to Norway to really see with my own eyes, you know, how does it work? You know, we know about salmon farming. Ah, there we see a picture. This is what it looks like. <laughs> but how does it work, right? Um, and really speaking to, to to people in a network, how does it work? What's important for you, you know? And you can think of an ingredient as just a nutritional thing. But there's a whole, you know, it needs to interact with other ingredients. It needs to work and, and have a special physical components as well. So you can really ask your questions and, and find out what's important, where in the whole supply chain. Um, mm -hmm. So that was very insightful to just experience it and see it and, and get even more network there. Um, yeah, so that's um, that's very cool. I think for the rest, uh, Marco Harvest is going at high speed. So on scale. Scaling, the scaling of our process itself is going really well um, uh, because we scaled up already within two years to full uh, production rates. So that's very exciting. Um, also, we were able to raise our Series A uh, last year and we just closed the post round. So things are going very, uh, very well there. Um, so for the rest, it's really things like, okay, how do you grow your company while keeping your culture? Um, in, in which uh, uh, parts do you invest? If you want to look at aquaculture, what type of application tests do you do? Uh, you know, what's important for your customers? So a lot of uh, things about growth of the company that's, uh, that's, that are very interesting and, uh, and, and need a lot of focus to be to, because you can grow, but you need to grow in a, in a sustainable way. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and you're, de you're definitely something. you're definitely doing that, Kate. Yeah. And congratulations. <laughs> I try amazing. to. I try to. Yeah. But these and are also things might... addressed in the workshop. So also about team culture and you know how to build teams. So I think that's very important. Important also as background. Yeah. And that continued support afterwards. And that was a great trip to Norway last year. And and, and that's just kind of an example of the innovation studio, the aftercare you get. So we link up with people and plug them into those networks. So we brought Kate and a few other people, a few other participants um, on, on a trip to Norway to introduce them to the salmon supply chain in Bergen. And now at the moment, I'm actually calling from Singapore where we're doing the same. We're bringing a delegation of Irish companies over to 
um, to, to Singapore to look into the shrimp in the Asian markets. But uh, Kate, congratulations on your raise as well. You didn't actually mention that, that small figure that you raised. Did, are you comfortable saying how much you've raised? Um, so now in total, we've raised over 10 million. So yeah, very happy with that. Congratulations, that's fantastic. Yeah. And Jen, do you want to talk a little bit about your challenges at the moment? You're moving at the speed of light as well. Uh, so either the challenges at the start or the challenges as you're scaling. Where, where do you start? <laughs> yeah. I, I think the challenge, but yeah, I suppose I should probably start from, from the beginning. Um, the, the biggest thing was not having experience in, on the science side. I, I came from a business background, worked in, in finance for, for several years. So there was some gaps in my skill set for sure at the, the very beginning. So I really had to learn the, the science side, uh, to learn the, the macroalgae side, and also learn the alternative protein side as well. And, and you know, while I, you know, I had some skills in terms of negotiating and management skills and team building skills and all of that, as a CEO, you kind of need to know everything. So I think that's just, it just that was, you know, some of the incredible challenges that we faced. I suppose now at a stage we're kind of going from the beginning stage and we're we're scaling to the next the the next level of development. So that in itself brings brings plenty of challenges. Um, the in, in terms of upscaling the process and working with manufacturers and working with different uh, companies and, and ingredient suppliers and and having having finding it difficult to get our hands on some of the ingredients as well. You know that it's, it's just been incredibly difficult to to scale the product to to bring to the next space and and also deciding on which market to to go to as well. Like you know, if we're, we're looking at the European market, the North American market, what what's going to be where, you know, our, where our customers going to buy it, where our products are, are not coming in at the, the cheapest, they're coming in about seven euros. So what's the most price sensitive market as well for, for us to, to, to go into? And as well as doing that, building out the team and, and the challenges and, and, and all that and, 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 under, and just trying to work with people and collaborate with people and working between different time zones. It, it's all incredibly challenging but incredibly rewarding as well to, to go through that process. But Hatch certainly uh, at, the, at the beginning stage and all through the process have been there from, from the beginning in terms of helping to build those networks introductions to investors, introductions to other companies that are going through the same challenges. And by having those conversations between other companies and, and having those conversations with, you know, BIM investors, you know, it makes it a huge, makes it so much easier really to, to upscale your business and, and get to the next stage of developments. But I could talk all day about challenges. I don't know, know where to start, but um, certainly th th there's so much more to say and happy for anybody to reach out after if they want to learn a little bit more. But that's just some of the early challenges that we, we've come across. And the next stage now is scale and, and how we're going to how we're going to do that. So. Brilliant. Thanks, Jen. And just so you spoke about you know you kind of went in there with that you, you you were quite strong with the business skills and then hatch were you know they filled the gap with plugging you into that network and maybe bringing your knowledge up in the aquaculture space and I, I suppose what we try to do in these innovation studios is any company that applies for the studio and is accepted onto the studio we sit down with them and we we put together a wish list so say like that if someone comes to us and say we want to raise x amount by 2024 it's important to mention that there there is no there, there is no investment guarantee coming onto the studio but what we do is we work with you to achieve in that goal and what, and what we do we have those we have access to those investors and that network and we get you ready and that you have the best possible chance of when we do introduce you to these people that you're ready for those people but um kate just with yourself on a personal note was there any skill what what were you, what do you feel you maybe needed to improve on before what was your strength coming into the studio and what what did you come on hoping to improve on or was there anything in particular you were or information or knowledge you were hoping to gain from a, attending the studio yeah so i think I, I started all of it with already a bit a bit of a background because i um you know i'm a scientist by background in biotechnology i did an executive mba so i know the business side as well um but then it was really about understanding the markets um you know really coming fresh into the whole aquaculture and then you know okay fish meal it's a problem you hear about it but what are the limitations what solutions are there already so really gaining that knowledge 
And, and I think whatever, so in my whole startup, the one thing I'm doing most of all is leveraging my network, you know, the, the network that I built up in many years, <laughs> more years yeah. than you might think. <laughs> I'm older than I look. So, you know, really like contacts from a decade ago, you know, I call them up and say, hey, I'm doing a very cool startup. Do you want to help out? So, you know, network is so important because you're doing something new every day, something unexpected, you know, every time new things come come, come on your plate. Um, and you can figure, try to figure it out all out yourself. We like to do things fast, so I just like to ask for help. Uh, and I think that's very important. So I have a big network in certain areas, but then in the market area, this was not there yet, you know? And uh, and I, I know the picture <laughs> that, that you see behind, but that's, that was about it. So really getting that understanding. And, and if you want to... Um, you know, if you really want to have a good product, you really need to understand your customer. I think this is this is so important. Um, so that was really this understanding of the customer, understanding of the markets. Uh, that was really what I was what I was after, and to get like the full picture of the agriculture markets. And this is also when you hear, you know, what are the real constraints that they are dealing with, right? Because you can. Th- think that uh, it's in the the sourcing of the raw materials but then you find out oh actually they don't have enough boats to transport the the feet and the fish oh that's the constraint so then you know okay you know it's not about having a lot available no it needs to be very nutrient dense because everything that you lose is a is a is a problem in the bottleneck so you know this is how you found out find out the real problems talking to people and uh, and, and seeing it yourself yeah so i think that that really helped and Hatch is uh, like a warm family that you uh, jump into. So <laughs> it's, uh, oh, they really good. stimulate you to, no, it's, it's really mm-hmm. like the, the um, you have network and you have network, right? And mm-hmm. it's, they ask you, as you mentioned, they ask you on beforehand, you know, do your homework, think about what you want, what you, what you need. But then also there's really efforts put in from the Hatch side to make that possible for you. So it's very personalized. And I think if you do a lot of accelerators and things like that, you notice that what's most important is the individual mentorship and individual help because every startup is different and has different problems and and challenges, I would say, (laughs) the cool ones. Mm -hmm. Um, So this, this personalized approach is very important, I think. Yeah. Brilliant. And, and I think that is, you know, most people, when, when people reach out to me and they apply for the studio and I have that initial conversation, it's, it's nearly always two things that people are looking for. They're either looking to become investor already or they're looking for new markets. But what they should really be saying is to broaden the network to access those new markets. And, you know, it's it's important that, you know, Hatch run this program, but it is, it's the BIM, Aquatech Innova- Innovation Studio in Ireland. It is their, you know, it is their studio. BIM have an amazing network in Ireland, but then Hatch have that global network. So I think the partnership works quite well together. You know, and Lee, maybe yourself. So you were kind of, you're an Irish oyster farmer. Do you want to explain a little bit about how the Innovation Studio maybe plugged you in with some of the partners and mentors on the program, uh, such as Uda Ross, like Whale Talk and BIM? Yeah, that was a, it was a big help. Like as, as an oyster farmer, I, I would have uh, known some of these people um, through doing grant applications and things like this but it's never uh, met the face or anything like this. So it was through a phone call or through an email. And then through the, the, the studio, I was meeting these uh, people every week. And they were like, oh, Lee, how are you? Hi, how are you? And I was like, oh, hi, who are you? <laughs> and, uh, but it was a lot of that, you know, is actually getting to know these people and realizing that there's so much more, um, you know, within BAM and that there's so much more within like the, the roles in BAM that that they have, that uh, there was one one person in particular in BAM and one person in particular in Uderas that just uh, absolutely launched uh, my business forward and um, that they made a lot of the things happen because they knew the right people to talk to. They had dealt with some of these things before. They knew the, you know, even just the, the paperwork sides of things. Like I was just an oyster farmer with an idea. So um kind of the people 
the people who are able to get your 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 little ducks in a row, uh, I think that's that's what it really really helped with. Definitely. Yeah, and I think and, and I think that's that's key because the supports are out there. You know, the supports are out there through Hatch, through BIM, through Uderos. Mm-hmm. It's but it, it's and I say I think the innovation studio it's it's a great opportunity because it brings all those people into the room. You know, BIM are involved from start to finish in the program as are as are now Uderos. Um, so it's really good because they get to know the participants over those two weeks and they really get to know their needs and they can plug them in accordingly. And it's amazing what can happen, you know, once that network can be open. But even w- without even those mentors, there's other mentors on the studio. Like, Jen, do you want to... So it's you went on to raise... Um, I'll let you tell the story, Jen. Do you want to tell uh, who you went on to raise afterwards and yeah, who, who um... those investors were? Uh, well, you know, it's a very early stage of my business as well that w- we started talking to to Hatch. Um, so the whole aquaculture industry and, and was was new to me. So for, so first of all, it, like the others said, it gave me an overview of the industry really, really quickly, and uh, catapulted that kind of growth over like even a, a two week period and introduced me to amazing network of in- investors and one particular investor that I met on the program um i followed up with him with him after um and he encouraged me to apply for the indie buyer program sosv in san francisco uh so i put in an application didn't really think anything of it kind of prestigious accelerator program you know was expecting to have to apply you know two or three times maybe to get into it and happened to hit more of my milestones uh, but thankfully given the the network that Wayne has and Carsten and the whole team and and that you know they really wanted to catapult Irish companies they they see the value in Ireland you know they see that the backing from Enterprise Ireland the funding that we have here and the opportunity that we have in Ireland and and that was one of the reasons that they knew that, that the hatch were behind it and and you know my capabilities and then ultimately in Dubai you will essentially that team would would maybe catapult the company so yeah incredibly we got selected for the program um and I've been over there for the past year just building up my network over there um meeting as many investors as we can uh, and and really what helped me I think during that program was on the science side and for, and getting investor ready you know where, where my gaps were certainly uh, on the on the science side and I learned so much uh, from other founders from you know even companies that are, have nothing to do with you it's just incredible being in the Bay Area for a certain amount of time how much you actually learn for all the different programs that you go to and all the different events how much that you pick up and how much you become in investor ready as well so so if I didn't do the innovation studios I really wouldn't have met someone face to face and I could have put in an application into SOSB and it might not have got picked up they get a thousand applications you know every every batch uh, and so it's it's like two percent get picked so it, it's by meeting one of those investors by chance on that I was able to build a relationship I was able to show them my commitment and and having that commitment and the backing from from Wayne and the team as well um you know help me help me get on to that program and yeah we the program offers uh, 250 and four months and a lab space as well and after that then we raised another 250 and then we're match funding currently now with with Enterprise Ireland and we're raising a larger round then later this year of three million then to to really go to market so yeah it's been it's been incredible um Certainly, you know, I don't think we could stress it anymore, but you can't build a business on your own. You have to have an ecosystem. You have to have a network and having those those chance meetings, going to those chance events can turn your business over overnight like that. So, yeah. Congratulations, Jen. That's brilliant. And and uh, just continuing on the topic of investment, Kate, um, how did you approach fundraising with your Series A rounds and, and most recently with the 1.5 euro? A million euro investment from Simon Capital. Um, yeah, so the um, we were already invested in pre-seed seeds by Food Labs. Um, so I had a lot of facilitation by them. So they helped me to build the deck. They helped me to manage investor relationships. Uh, they brought me a lot of warm uh, connections. Um, then also via Hedge as part of the of the whole um, uh, program. There was an, in, a pitch event at the end of the day. Um, I think what we really did, so the environment has changed now, right? So we were able to create some FOMO. 
uh, fear of missing out <laughs> for investors, uh, which is always good like because then they come with the term <laughs> sheets, right? Yeah. Mm. So the, those times are gone, right? So there's, you know, the FOMO doesn't exist anymore. So we were still a bit in the last phase that that was possible. And I think what we played well is we did a big international press announcement that we came out of stealth mode is, um with that news and that we were now going out to to raise um and then we sort of we kept leveraging that on linkedin and by being on stages you know uh in panels and things like that so really being in in, in everybody's face all the time so that you know you become a bit the talk of the town um so that worked worked really well um so in the end we were oversubscribed we were able to choose our lead investor so that was a real luxury um, so we were able to close the, the series A then by the end of last summer. Um, and then for the post round in, in principle, we were like, okay, we have our money. Now we want to build our company, right? Because as a company, you need to move from pure R and D at some point to, uh, also not just R and D, but also production company, right? We want to produce something. Um, so we really wanted to focus on that, but there were, yeah, there were still a lot of investors that uh, were, yeah, said that they couldn't join in the series A and they kept knocking on the doors. Um, and in the end, we found a great partner that can bring more than money, because I think that's so important to have investors that bring more than just the money, but that bring knowledge, that bring network, uh, things like that. Um, so we found like really a strategic partner and that brought also new investors. So that was really, uh, yeah, really awesome to, to be able to have that. Um, yeah, so I think we're really in a luxury position. But really, because of the whole network around is enabling us, right? So that's uh, that's very important. Yeah, thanks, Kate. No, it's 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 brilliant just to to have someone there that can offer that guidance as well, as well as the money. Um, Jen, do you want to talk a little bit about you, where, where you're going now? The next step, you you have an exciting new product coming on the market. Do you want to talk about that and maybe some of the challenges around that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, sure. So we, we've we've um, essentially we we launched one product to the market um, last year to see what kind of attraction we would get. If customers were going to be interested, or we're in the right segment, and uh, you know it's fantastic. I would encourage anybody to do that if they have an opportunity. They don't need to go through any major regulatory issues. Is just to get some data initially from. Um, from customers, consumers understand how difficult it is dealing with distributors and manufacturers and, and you know, ha having to manage all those situations. So, so, so initially we had a we had a great experience in, in, in launching that first product. And now we're launching four products to the market in, in a whole range. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll explain pretty what they are, but we have a signature flaky cod. Uh, we've got the CB Goujons. We've got the Irish seaweed burger and then we've got fish cakes as well. We're using all Irish seaweed right now while we might have to leverage off other countries for seaweed because that's another challenge that we're, we're overcoming. Uh, we, we are currently using Irish seaweed and we're scaling up seaweed as well to be able to meet that demand in the future. So we've just partnered with the Irish seaweed consultancy down on the, the west coast of Ireland and they're helping us to grow some initial species starting with Palmaria palmata. Uh, we're looking at potentially growing Ulva later this year, um, and that's to ensure that we have a, a constant supply, that we were able to go into new markets very quickly, and that, that we have that availability there. So there's going to be plenty of challenges um, ahead for us, absolutely, but we've, we've built out the core relationships so far. We've just partnered with a Swiss um, distributor. We have a manufacturer lined up in, in Germany that's that will kind of support the, the Central European aspect. We're also talking to a, a co-manufacturer in New York as well to supply the, the North America region. So yeah, all of that has been an, an incredibly uh, challenging and exciting also opportunity to have to to build out those networks and talk to people and and figure out and you know who can do what and and talk to ingredient suppliers and doing tests and doing feedback and gaining which data it's been it really has been full steam ahead for for the past year but um you know you you, you are going to get you are going to come across challenges you are going to come across ingredient suppliers that go out of business or that can't supply you or Various things like getting getting our hands on some samples was even difficult, like some flavorings and different things like that. And and 
you know, the, the stronger relationship that you can build with these people, I think the better in the long run that they won't let you down when you, when you really go to market. So, so, so that's been really key. I'm really, really excited now about this, this next step and, and getting a real brand and real products out to the market. It's terrifying, but it's also <laughs> what we've been working towards for the past two years. So, um, you know, it's, it, it does take, it does take a bit of time to, to, to get there and, uh, to plenty of challenges, but if you can, you know, focus on getting over those challenges, I think, as, as quickly as possible, um, just working, trying to solve those issues as quick as possible, I think everybody will get there eventually. Thanks, Jen. And, and Lee, do you want to talk about where you are now and what's next for Oyster Pitch? Well, at the minute now, it's a, a lot, a lot of testing is um, that the whole the whole idea involves uh, artificial intelligence aspect. Um, so a lot of samples is needed to actually train um, the whole system. So that side of things is slow, but it's progress. And in the meantime, uh, then we're just looking at, you know, uh, building the actual machine more than the software as well. So. Now, while the testing has been done, you have a bit of time to uh, focus on, you know, the aesthetics and the market and the network of where it's going to go, who's it going to serve, um, you know, where is it going to be manufactured, you know, things like this. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's allowed, it's allowed a little bit more focus and a little bit more brain power um, to be, uh, to be put somewhere else. And, uh, but it's 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 going forward, and uh, I would like it to be a little bit faster. But I think that's that's something that everyone can uh, attest to that the early stages can be a little bit a little bit slow and a little bit tedious. And uh, and as Jen and Kate were saying about the importance of partnership, I, I presume that's going to be quite big for you as well, Lee, finding the right partners to to. Uh, to develop the AI aspects. So how are you going about building that, building those relationships with partnerships in well, the Oyster market? I, I, I was noticing that about uh, the two girls when when they're speaking is that I come from the opposite end uh, where I'm so heavily involved in the aquaculture industry itself that the, the networking and who to go to, uh, what side of things within the industry itself is all is all there um but it's the wider network you know the manufacturer the distributor the the you know the, the parts like that that they're the gaps that need to be filled and uh, i know once once we have a, a little bit more of a solid product um ready to be going that uh hatch will definitely be there to be uh, helping out with things like that brilliant thanks lee Okay, uh, we're we're getting towards the end of our time, so we might just open it up to any questions there, Ben. Yeah, right. Uh, if anyone online wishes to ask questions, please do so uh, using the Q and A function. Uh, thank you for tuning in, everyone. Uh, please ask any questions you have for our panelists today. And if there are no questions, uh, I have a question. Uh, we, we, we spoke about investors um, and something investors want to see nowadays is sustainability. How did being on the studio make you rethink about sustainability and where your company fits into the picture? Maybe starting with Kate. Um, I think, in, in agriculture and sustainability is really close to the hearts of all the people that work in agriculture, you know, um, they really care for their animals, they care for the environment. What, what really stood so much out for me, especially during the Norway trip, is that the whole salmon cultivation is like an industry that's only like 50 years old. It's, it's, it's very very new actually and if you see how much testing and 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 trying and like all ideas are going on uh, and how fast the industry evolves compared to the industrial biotech which is quite conventional and slow this was really amazing so i think that was like a thing that really stood out for me uh, you know the the dynamics of the industry and the willingness to uh, to to try and to test and and further optimize so i, I think that was very very interesting um, and it also, you know, th there's a lot of 
if you have an alternative protein company, it's very easy to think like, okay, the whole world needs to go vegan within a couple of decades because that's the way we save the world. And I, I feel like that's that's quite unrealistic. And then to see, okay, you know, fish can be done in a sustainable way, you know, and they're really working hard on technologies to make it even more sustainable. And how can I contribute into that, you know, and collaborate with that? I think that's um, that's important to, to see, like, what is your role in the whole picture? Um, and, and really, how can you contribute to that? And I think if you if you understand that much more, and this is also what you can communicate to your investors, that, you know, what's very important for investors to see is that you understand what you are working on. Um, yeah, so I think that was that was really quite helpful. Wonderful, thanks, Kate. And now we'll go to the first question in the Q&A. Does Ireland have an opportunity to benefit from the global growth of aquaculture? Maybe starting with Lee. 100%. We're a little island on the west coast of Europe with some of the most fertile waters in the world. Um, so, yeah, of course, it's it's uh, a, a, an amazing untapped resource, uh, in particular with aquaculture, especially with the state of uh, fisheries around the world and the global need for seafood being so much, the demand being so much higher uh, than the the stock or whatever um but yes of course ireland has great opportunity and it's it's courses and and companies like hatch and and uh, the likes of bam that they do do a lot to move it forward and open it up but i do think it's hatch's global um network and global perspective that uh, anyone here on the panel will know that uh the uh, doing the hatch course uh, one person in particular will always say think bigger think bigger you know it's not just about where you are in your little corner of the world the world is a small place now and ireland needs to be a part of that uh, that big world wonderful thanks and jen your thoughts yeah, actually, uh, I was just thinking there, Lee, when you were talking, you know, from, from being in the US the past year, I have started to appreciate Ireland a lot more. Um, you know, we, we come from uh, a really wealthy Western country that we can leverage our governments and BAM and, uh, you know, other other institutions. And we've, we've, we've got a lot of research and EU grants that we can also um, obtain. So, you know, I, I didn't un until working with other companies in, in the batch on the accelerator program that don't have the luxury of, of being able to leverage off governments. I realize how lucky we are and the opportunities that we have here in Ireland. As much as we like to criticize Ireland sometimes for being a little bit small and not global minded. I think it's, uh, Lee, I think you hit the nail on the head there. It's like, think bigger. Like we can create the science in Ireland. We can get the research paid for. We have those entities that can help us out there. But, you know, ultimately, by solving something science-based in Ireland, that, that technology could be, uh, you know, brought to Singapore, anywhere any, anywhere in the world. So, so, so that's really important. I think there's a huge opportunity as well globally. Like we are an island. We're not leveraging um, agriculture to where we should be. Certainly, certainly not. The Norwegians are 25 years ahead of us. Uh, we have to do it sustainably, so that's going to cause some challenges for us in terms of getting to profitability quicker. But, you know, I think over the next few years, we are going to see we, we have to move away from meat and dairy to, to some extent. So we are going to see a lot more agriculture activities happening there as well. So, yeah, very excited to see what happens in Ireland over the next few years. Perfect. Thank you for that, Jen. Uh, the next question, uh, is it difficult to get skilled staff in the areas you need? Uh, I think I'll direct that to Kate first. Um, yes and no, um, uh, as always, you get this answer. So I think what's, what's really great that if you have a company that has like a purpose and a drive to create impact, I think this is very attractive for a lot of people to join. Um, also, you know, as a startup, you offer people a position in which they have direct impact on what happens to the company, right? If you are in a very big corporate company, you're like a little radar somewhere in the corner there. While if you're at a startup, even if you just have an assistant role, you know, you can steer the company. So that's, that's very exciting. And, and that's what you can offer. And also a lot of dynamics, you know? Um, so, so that's, it's, it's really nice and it can attract people um, on skilled people. 
Yeah, so one thing that we did actually was that we, so the company is just originally based in Hamburg, so we're still there, but now we also opened a subsidiary in Lisbon, and we really did this with the purpose to attract more talents, um, because especially also for industrial biotech, you have a lot of very good universities there, they speak very well English, they have good, great work ethics, right? Um, so, uh, and my, my co-founder is Portuguese, so that's allowed us to do it because I think you always need someone local that, uh, that enables it. Um, yeah, but that's also something that we, that we jumped into to really further facilitate this. Um, and it's, it's, it's really great to see. I think it's it, what's important that if you try to find talent is that you can attract a lot of young talent, right? Straight out of university and the youngsters that want to change the world, et cetera. But uh, I think it's very important to also have the more senior people in your company that, you know, have a bit more experience that have built up their robustness because in the startup things change continuously. So <laughs> you need to be able to, to deal with that. So, um, yeah, and, and I think that's that's important to, you know, to, to focus that you get in the experience um, and, and also the young talent. And one thing that we did, I think one thing that is sometimes difficult for a startup is that, for instance, for marketing, you want to have someone that knows about marketing, but you don't have enough work to have someone full-time working on it. You want to have someone doing business development, but you don't have product yet to sell. So, you know, how do you keep those people incentivized? So one thing that we did is also to work with external consultants um, that come in with a lot of experience. They work for you part-time, one, two days a week. They, they have so much experience that it's the same as someone junior putting in 40 hours a week and you have flexibility with them um, and you work very efficiently. So those are also tricks that that allow you to get in, you know, skilled people, even if you don't have full time jobs for them. And what we also did was, for instance, uh, if we wanted to have a position we really, it was a really central position. We wanted to take the time to really find the right fit. So then in the intermediate time, we used consultants as well, because then, you know, you don't need to stop or, or pause activities. You can keep running, um, but you also really take the time to find like a right cultural fit to grow your company. So I think those are things that we did that uh, worked out pretty well. Perfect. Thanks for that, Kate. Uh, and maybe Jen first for any comments. Uh, to, yeah, to um, yeah, really interesting, Kate, to hear your side of that as well. And you know, I, I, I've, it is. I find it very difficult sometimes to get some skilled staff. But you know, if you think about, if you just take Ireland for example, we, you know, there's a lot of jobs in Ireland. Well, there was <laughs> maybe the, the tech industry failing a bit, but oh, you know, over the last couple of years, it was very high well-paying jobs in Ireland so trying to incentivize somebody into a startup um giving them you know you, you can't pay them a, a, a six-figure salary for sure uh, but you can incentivize them with with shares as well but then you also want to make sure that they're right fit and giving them shares can cause some issues in the company as well so so they're really important things to think about but another thing that I was just thinking there when Kate was talking was about you know AI chat GPT and how much of of that can we is going to be outsourced in, in years to come and where where are really going to be the skills in in the company as well so so they're also things to be considering but I think the the important jobs um in, in the startups you know a lot of, a lot of where I thought oh I need to have a scientist or I need to have a you know a, a marketing person I'm like actually I just need an operations person I need somebody to just get stuff done that's that's an all-rounder and we've used like that consultants as well to do some some of the scientific work or uh, food scientists we've hired them in interns have worked out just amazingly as well for us a, a lot of interns as well because you, you have to do things on a shoestring so you're thinking of all ways to 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 kind of leverage up the company so so it is going to be a bit scrappy for the first few years until like Kate has raised her 10 million <laughs> to afford to pay people real salaries but um you know leverage what you can get get us get what you can done get get whatever you can done just done for free and um, also, you know, leverage off the, the highest skilled consultants around to give you the best advice. And you'll figure it out as time goes and you're going to make no some mistakes on that as well. So um, just be prepared for that. Thank you for that, Jen. In the interest of time, I will ask the last question and for quick responses from each of the panelists, uh, starting with Niall. Um, is there anything you would change looking back uh, on hindsight? 
you want me to answer that, Ben? <laughs> no, I want I want Lee to answer that. <laughs> it's like, okay. uh, that's a difficult one. Uh, the that's looking back is only looking back a year for me. Um, but the if there's you know potential uh, people who who want to join the the hatch course, uh, the one thing that you'll know is that it's very quick. It's very intense. It's very uh, it's all go 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 and you're flooded with information and it gives you this amazing acceleration and drive and thrill to be part of it use that thrill use that drive and keep that momentum going uh, that's uh, kind of i would i would keep it going a little bit longer than than i had the momentum for it but uh, it's uh, it's 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 a good a good thing to have to use at the time Perfect. Uh, Kate? Um, the one thing I would do different, I think I would do more sports. <laughs> but, um, so really not. So I, I think the company, I think it's, it's I'm, I'm really proud of the team. You know, it's, it's me here, but I have two amazing co-founders. Which, which an, an amazing team further to, to back us up. And I think we really made uh, great steps. And of course there were mistakes, but you learn from this. Um, otherwise, you don't know that you're moving in the right direction, right? Um, I think what's what's difficult as a as a founder is balancing your your work life balance, right? And especially as a CEO. Um, uh, and in the beginning, I was doing like regularly sports, and that sort of uh, melted away. So I think uh, it's important to to keep taking care of yourself uh, and do sports. So I think yeah, I think that would be the one thing. Thank you, Kate. And lastly, Jen. Um, yeah, really interesting. What would I change? Um, yes, I think at the beginning I had a, a imposter syndrome for sure. You know, I, I was lacking that confidence and starting a business. Are people going to take me seriously? What does she know about aquaculture? And, and actually, I think the flip on that, not just saying this, Noel, Ben, but the flip on that was probably the, the Hatch Innovation Studio. I think that really kind of turned it on its head where, where you realize that actually the people working in, in that space are not actually skilled in that space or, or don't have the, the necessary qualifications. So if I had gotten over that a little bit quicker, I think it might have scaled the business a little bit quicker, but but I did eventually. And, and you learn, like as soon as as soon as you learn more, you get more confidence and you know how to you can speak better than than what you are. You know, once you know more about your product and what you're delivering, I think the confidence comes. But you know, just to encourage people to just get on with it, forget about what everybody else thinks and just do your best. I think. That's one piece of advice and what I would hopefully change if I look back on that, I would just go for it from, from the very beginning. Um, part, and, and just to echo on Kate's thing as well, I think um, at the beginning of the business, I was just working 12 hours a day. I was exhausted and, and trying to build as many networks as I can. And I, I had put exercise on the back burner because I was like, it's not important. Uh, this The business is, is important, but I, I, I've i changed that now. And, and you know, I, unfortunately I have to get up ridiculously early to do any exercise because meetings normally start at eight so but but I'm doing it and I'm surprised at myself that I'm doing it but I've managed to maintain it so that's really important as well just to to find 30 minutes a day just to do something yeah wonderful thank you for sharing uh Jen Kate Lee uh, for being so honest and sharing your journeys uh we really appreciate it and I'm sure the audience does as well uh, once again, this is uh, a webinar to share more about the BIM Aquatech Innovation Studio. You can apply for it if you search for www.hatch.blue or look at the link in this uh, in the chat right now. For people listening thereafter on YouTube, we will also put the link in the description below. The application is a simple process. Um, and to answer the question from uh, Harry Masters, uh, Hatch does have two funds where we invest the First fund is a pre-seed fund, accelerator fund. We just closed applications for this year, but moving forward, we will have rolling applications. The second fund is a growth stage uh, scaling up fund called the Blue Revolution Fund that invests between 500,000 and 5 million euros. But otherwise, a very, very big thank you to Lee, uh, Jen, and Kate for your time. It's always wonderful to hear from you. Always good to catch up and, and learn about your progress and, and see just how far you've come uh, it's, it's always awesome to see and 
yeah, all the best for the future. Well, thank you, Ben, and, and thanks, Noel. I'm sure it's late over there right now in Singapore. So, for thanks for staying up to chat to us as well. No, Cheers, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure to reconnect, and definitely. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Jen. Have thanks, Lee. Have a good rest of your week. Thank you.